Okay, this is uh, just going to be a short video here talking about this little sections in the notes that I'm just showing you here. And what I'm going to do is just give you some explanations about th this section and specifically tell you a little bit about how viruses can cause cancers and illustrate that with a few examples here. So, let's see if I can turn this around now. So you can see me for a little while. <laughs> see me there, but hopefully you can hear me. So, it turns out that viruses cause between 10 and 15 percent of all cancers. And there are a few terms there that you're going to need to know, and I'll be using this kind of jargon as I'm explaining things to you. But neoplastic cells are cells that grow in an uncontrolled fashion. There's another term that's not there on the list. It's called transformation. And transformation is a process of converting a normal cell in the body into a tumor cell. And so this process of transformation occurs in a number of different ways through a number of different pathways in the cell. But <clears throat> the, the hallmarks of this process of transformation include disruption of the controls over the cell cycle, disruption of controls on the ability of the cell to actually kill itself when things go wrong. So these are the apoptotic pathways. And then thirdly, uh, also disruption of the, the controls that keep a cell where it's supposed to be in the body. Now if you th think about, you know, a cell somewhere in the body, in your, in your liver, in your brain, and that cell is supposed to be where it is to, in order to do what it's supposed to do for the body. Now, if that cell begins to grow in an uncontrolled fashion, like start to reproduce itself over and over again, and then it also gains the ability to just float off and settle down wherever it is uh, in the body, um, these two things together then really are problematic because then what you have are uh, malignant tumors that are um, invasive and if they can actually float off like I just described they're, they're called metastatic at that point. So anyways you know the normal controls on a cell in the body if a cell you know floats out of your liver normally what happens is it's not getting all the proper signals from its neighboring cells and it will send itself into an apoptotic pathway and kill itself. So if you've messed up cell division, messed up your apoptosis controls, messed up where you're supposed to be in the body, then you can have real problems in, in these cells Then we refer to as tumor cells or cancer cells. So how do viruses cause cancers? Well, a number of different ways. Um, two main things that can happen is that first, either viruses can integrate themselves into parts of the genome that control cell division, control apoptosis, or control where a cell is supposed to be in the body. So you've got this integration event that's actually acting as a mutation to disrupt things. I'm going to show you an example of that here in a minute. Uh, the other thing that can happen is that a lot of viruses have genes that encode proteins that actually interfere with the cell cycle and interfere with apoptosis pathways. And so these viruses produce their own uh, what we call oncogenes. These are uh, genes that encode proteins that promote the development of that cell into a cancer cell. So, a um, number of examples of, of these types of situations. The retroviruses are famous examples of viruses that 
can integrate themselves into parts of the genome and cause mutations. We talked a little bit about that with the XSCID study that was done, um, the attempts to deliver the um, interleukin-2 receptor to um, stem cells and then thereby correcting this interleukin-2 receptor defect in these XSCID individuals. And actually the, the, the gene therapy there actually worked, um, but as, as we learned, a couple of the patients in that study ended up with a type of leukemia because the virus had integrated near what was what we call proto-oncogene, one of these genes that um, controls either the cell cycle or apoptosis or where that cell is supposed to be in the body. So anyways, retrovirus can, can you know, cause mutations that way and induce cancers in that way. The other thing that retroviruses can do in a little more directed fashion is that they can actually pick up proto-oncogenes and carry them from cell to cell and from individual to individual. And so usually when the viruses pick up one of these genes, they introduce mutations into it, and so it's no longer um, acting as it should when it, when it gets expressed. So the protein that gets made is um, not behaving properly. And... So we end up with this situation where the virus can actually deliver this um, cancerous gene to um, fresh cells and to fresh individuals. So it essentially be becomes a, a tumor-inducing virus. Classic example of this is the RAL sarcoma virus, which was discovered by Peyton Rouse back in the days before they really knew what viruses really were. So about in, right around 1912, what happens with, uh, with Rouse is that one of the local chicken farmers sends his wife in with a chicken that had a tumor, and it turned out that a lot of his chickens were getting this tumor. And so what Rouse discovered was that this tumor was actually transmissible, and that's an unusual thing. Because, you know, normally with, uh, with uh, tumors, they're derived from tissues in the body. And so if you take tumor cells from one individual and transfer them to another individual, the graft rejection um, will basically eliminate the tumor. And what Rouse found was that he could transfer the tumors and he was interested in how this was happening, and he actually ground up some of the tumors and passed them through the filters that we talked about. And he took the filtrates, and he found that the filtrates were able to induce tumors in fresh chicken hosts. So uh, that was a very strange thing. A lot of people didn't believe him when he made this discovery, and it took a long time before the rest of the scientific community actually got on board and realized that, yeah, these viruses were actually causing tumors, at least in, in this case with this particular type of virus. This particular virus is called the Rouse sarcoma virus, and it turns out that it's a retrovirus. Now, he ended up getting the Nobel Prize something like 40 years after his initial discovery. It took that long for biology to catch up with his discovery. We had to go through the early stages of the molecular biology revolution to really understand what was going on with the virus and understand that the virus had picked up a normal gene in the vertebrate body and converted that normal gene into a cancer-causing gene, it's called oncogene. Okay, well, so um, that's kind of the, the second way that these mutations can be introduced and we can have disruptions of normal cellular genes, a couple of variations there that happen with the retroviruses. Now, the other kind of main way that 
that viruses can cause cancer is they're going to express genes of their own that interfere with usually the cell cycles, but uh, sometimes the apoptosis pathways as well. The Papova viruses um, have uh, members have members uh, called the papillomaviruses, and there are lots of papillomaviruses. So different types of uh, different mammals have uh, different types of papillomaviruses. So these are the wart viruses, and these wart viruses cause benign tumors. That's what a wart is. It's a benign tumor. They're not invasive. They're not deadly. But what happens with the papillomaviruses is that they have uh, two genes in the human papillomaviruses. We call these the E6 and the E7 gene. And these genes interfere with the cell cycle and apoptotic pathways. So the E6 protein interferes with the P53 pathway. We don't have time to get into that in detail. But basically, P53 detects DNA damage and um, shuts the cell down, sends it into either um, cell cycle arrest, or if the DNA damage is bad enough, you, the, it can, the signals can be to tell the cell to kill itself. So that's the E6 protein. The E7 protein interferes with RB, which is one of the main control proteins in controlling entry into the cell cycle, so controlling cell division. So we have this virus now that as part of its normal life cycle interferes with both the apoptotic and the cell cycle control aspects of the cell. And it does this in a controlled way that doesn't normally cause malignant cancer. But what can happen is that with some of these viruses, they get into certain cells in the body and the, the cervical epithelium is the famous one here where we get um, what we call cervical carcinomas that arise from human papillomavirus infections. And the virus doesn't carry out its normal life cycle in these cells, and instead we get some prolonged aberrant expression of the E6 and E7 genes, oftentimes as a result of an anomalous integration of the viral sequences into the host cell chromosomes in these cells of the cervical epithelium. And then what happens is we have the E6 and the E7 genes interfering with cell cycle and apoptosis, and we get this out-of-control cell division. And eventually these cells, usually you need uh, at least one more event, meaning another mutation gets into the mix and the cell gets out of control and it begins to invade the surrounding tissues and oftentimes they become metastatic. So anyways, this is an example of, of a virus that produces some proteins of its own that interfere with apoptosis in the cell cycle. So I'm going to stop this little video here and see if I can get it transferred onto the canvas page.